Okay, this is the periodic trends introduction video. Um, so the first little background part there talks about like um, Dmitry Mendeleev in 1870, studying and organizing the elements of the time. He then um, left spots for open ones and then other people came through and filled in those open areas with actual elements. Um, and then you had people like Henry Mosley um, who talked about um, the proton being the order the periodic table has to go in. And then now we're going to look at actually some trends with the periodic table. So the first thing you got to do is define a few of these terms so you know kind of what you're looking for. And a few of them you should know and a few of them you may not. Okay, so the first thing is going to be an atomic mass. Okay, we talked about this last chapter when we're dealing with isotopes and atomic mass on a periodic table. Well, the atomic mass, remember, is the average of all of the isotopes masses for one element. So these are the numbers that are underneath um, most elements on the periodic table, you know, carbon's 12.01, nitrogen's 14.01, things like that. Those are atomic masses. Okay, atomic radius, um, like the radius for a circle, okay, um, it's the distance from your center of one atom to the outside of that atom, and these are actually very hard to actually see the or, or kind of define an atomic radius because atoms are actually have those orbitals, those electron clouds, so they're actually very hard to determine the atomic radius for something. Usually we deal them with, actually with bonding of one atom bonded to another, and you cut the radius in half. But for right now, okay, we learned that the atomic radius is the distance from your nucleus to your last energy level. So the distance from the center all the way out to our valence electrons. Okay, so the next one is what's ionization energy? Okay, and ionization energy is a new one. Notice how it has the term energy in it. So it's going to be the energy required to do something. Okay, in this case, it is the energy needed to remove an electron. And this is an electron from either a neutral atom or from an atom that already has an electron added to it. You can actually have multiple ionization energy, energies, and we'll look at that here a little later on in a few videos later. Okay, electronegativity is the next one. Um, this is now dealing with bonding, talking about not just an atom in particular, and how big it is and whether or how much energy it takes to take an electron, but actually talking about this atom bonded to another atom. All right, And it's the ability of an atom to actually attract the electrons that are part of a bond because electrons are what are used to make bonds between um, atoms. So it's the ability of an atom to attract an electron in a bond. Think of it like a tug of war between two atoms. One atom may want electrons closer to it more than another, kind of like a little stronger magnet, a little weaker magnet, and we'll look a lot more at electronegativity in a couple of chapters. Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to look at now is we're going to open up our K-12 periodic table app. So just so you know, you have an app on your um, iPad that deals with the periodic table. And we're going to look at atomic mass. Okay, so I'm kind of going to just go back and forth between the app and my um, sheet here. So I'll look at my periodic table app. It's called K-12 periodic table. It looks like this. Okay. And we're looking at atomic mass. So right now, these elements are ordered in order of atomic mass for the most part. Okay, we know that they're actually in order of um, atomic number, but there are, for the most part, mass is also increasing as you go across. And there are a couple that are out of order. Um, the main one being like argon. Argon's mass, if we look at that one there, it says 39.948. And then potassium coming next is 39.098. So we do have a couple things that are out of order, but for the most part, as you go down a group, it means from top to bottom, our mass is increasing. If you look at lithium, lithium is 6.941. Okay, and we don't have francium, francium is 223. So down a group, we're increasing. As you go across from left to right, you, left to right, you are also increasing. Rubidium is 85.468. I go across that period to xenon, xenon's 131.30. So my atomic mass is increasing as we're going across the periodic table here. So on your map, or on your picture there on your iPad, or I'm sorry, on your notes, you want to make sure that you're drawing an arrow this way, and that way those are increasing arrows. Those are the directions they're increasing because they are both increasing. Okay? And the arrows are for increasing for right now. All right, so we're gonna, next we're going to look at is electronegativity, and we're going to do the same thing. Okay? So we know now we're talking about the ability to attract an electron in a bond, so we're going to change the little feature here to electronegativity. Okay, so now we see electronegativity is now our main coloring, okay? Um, and if we look at our kind of scale here, 
the three and up is a very dark purple, okay, and then the lighter shades are less electronegative. So we see the really dark purple ones are up there in the upper right-hand corner. Actually, if we look at them closely, okay, F or fluorine actually has the highest electronegativity value, and this one says that it has a value of 3.98. When we look at oxygen, and if we read the screen, okay, it says that it's 3.44, Chlorine is 3.16, Krypton is 3, Nitrogen is 3.04. So those are, are kind of our four most electronegative, which is why are, they are the um, biggest color. Gold is also a little bit higher than all the rest of them around it, for, but, but for the most part, okay, Fluorine is the most electronegative, and you kind of spider web out from Fluorine as to what's kind of how the values go. All right, the further it is to the left on your table, the less electronegative it is. So when it's asking us here, as you move down a group, you're basically decreasing or remaining constant. They are very close, okay? But you are definitely increasing as you're going across the period overall because fluorine is the most. Again, we're remembering here that my arrow should be increasing going up and to the right because fluorine up here in the upper right is actually the most electronegative element. And then, like I said, it kind of spider webs out to the ones that are a little closer to it are actually the more electronegative as well. All right, atomic radius is one we're going to look at a little more closely. Atomic radius, ionization energy are our main ones for this chapter. So if I change my coloring again to atomic radius, okay, and the really nice thing about this is now I have a nice picture of the atom's radius for these different elements. And so we can very easily see that as we go down a group, okay, those ones at the bottom are much bigger. So if I compare, especially if I compare, um, Hydrogen here in the upper left, all the way down to frantium. Frantium is a much larger um, radius, and they're actually measured in picometers, which is why it says PM there. It's 298.6. Um, and then hydrogen at the very top is 52.9. Okay? Uh, so increasing as you're going down, it's a little bit harder to see because you have some of the um, transition metals there in the middle that seem very, very constant. Um, but as you look on the left-hand side to the right-hand side of the periodic table, the ones on the right-hand side are smaller. But like I said, the, gradu the change is much more gradual. All right, And we'll talk a lot more in these next videos about why that change is a lot more gradual. Okay, So as we go down a group, we are increasing. As you go across the period, we are decreasing. So we're actually increasing as we go to the left and as we go to the bottom. All right, now we're looking at ionization energy, so it's ability to lose an electron or have somebody take an electron from you if you're an atom. Okay, so I'm going to change our coloring again from atomic radius to ionization energy. Okay, and this one has a nice color again. Notice how the deep red one says it's 10 kilojoules per mole and up. That's just the unit for how much energy. Uh, joule is the energy amount, and the mole we'll talk about later. That's kind of an amount, all right? Um, but the deeper the red color, the orange color, the higher the ionization energy. So if we see overall, the highest ionization energies here are on the right-hand side of the table. All right, that's easy to see. Now, the top to bottom is a little bit harder, especially for the right-hand side of the table because they all look very, very large numbers. Okay, and the noble gases there are all going to be very large because they don't want to lose electrons, so it takes a lot of energy to take them, which is why there's not much variation there in a noble gas column. Okay, but if we take... More, for example, um, one of the metal columns, we notice that the top ionization energy for lithium is um, 520.2, and at the bottom it's 380, so we have decreased as we went down. That's, for the most part, it'll decrease as, you go, as it goes down the table. Um, some of them, especially the transition metals we see here in the middle, um, I have, this is going to be... Uh, 652, and then TA right below it is actually 761. It's a little more, but ionization energy and, th and things in the transition metal group get a little more dicey. So we kind of look at the overall trend, which is top to bottom, the increase for ionization energy. Uh, decreasing as you go down a group, increasing as you go across the period. And if we compare this one to the one above it, they are exactly opposite, which is what it's supposed to be. Okay? There's a good trend with why they work that way, okay? And the last thing we're going to look at is just some terms about what's an ion. You need to know from your freshman year, okay? An ion is any atom that is gaining or losing electrons, okay? So we talk about an ionization energy. That's why it's called an ionization energy, because you're removing an electron 
which means that you're becoming an ion. If we have what's called a positive ion, that's a cation. It's a name. I always think the T looks like a positive sign. Okay, um, so that means that we have lost electrons. All right, a negative ion is called an anion, and that means that we have gained electrons. Okay, if you're gaining a negative charge, you're becoming more negative, which is why a negative ion means you're gaining electrons. Okay. Positive does not mean you're gaining. Positive actually means you're, actually means you're losing because we're dealing with a negatively charged particle.